everyone. This is Melissa Mullen with Beck Technology. Um, I'm here today with Victor Esquino, uh, project lead, and John Bowser, head of development. Thank you all for joining us today. I do need to share a quick heads up before we get going. Our company is scheduled to have a fire drill today. So in the event that that happens during the webinar, we will have to cut it short. If that does occur, we will finish the webinar at a later time and send the recording out to everyone who registered for this webinar. Uh, with that being said, I will hand it over to Victor. Hey, thanks, Melissa. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, Mike shared a couple of the some of the new features and enhancements uh, that we have in 2019-20 uh, that's scheduled to release uh, probably within the next week or so uh, as a limited release. Let me clarify that. So uh, a lot of these changes are going to be revolving around fees. Uh, some of the changes that we're going to be showing you today are going to be revolving around fees and reports. Uh, these changes came from a lot of client feedback and requests. So uh, let's go ahead and get started on that. I already have the estimator open here to an initial cost estimate. Um, the first set of features I'm going to show you today are going to revolve around fees. Um, so let me go ahead and open that up for you guys. Uh, as you can see, I already have some cost line items created here, just a simple estimate uh, that we, we put together here just a little time, a little while ago. So on the uh, fee editor here, I have some common fee est uh, common fees estimators uh, work with. Uh, the first thing you will notice is that we have a new column here that's going to give you the ability to turn on and off fees without having to remove them or re-add them. Um, estimators usually have some sort of standard set of fees that uh, can apply to projects that they work on, but not all projects require fees. So depending on the current status of a project, changes in design or selected subcontractors, certain fees may come into play that uh, weren't previously needed. So now uh, by turning on and off the fees, estimators are able to try different what if scenarios. So as you can see here, if I just turn off this last fee, you can see it, uh, it changes the final total here. <clears throat> the great thing about being able to disable fee is that it changes, uh, the change is global, uh, meaning when it's disabled, it's removed from both the estimate and the report, just as if it were uh, never introduced into the fee, fee table. Um, Let's look at some of the other improvements we've made in this section. Uh, we recognize estimators have fee structures that require a fee that is based on a specific cost category, such as labor. They only want that fee to affect a certain set of cost items. So also more often than not, estimators need to apply custom fees to a line item under certain conditions. So uh, currently this requires the creation of multiple custom fees for each condition, uh, which is time consuming and makes uh, reports messy or harder to communicate. If we look at the, the first fee here uh, for builder's risk, if I, we can see that this is a custom fee. So if I open this up uh, and we edit the custom fee, we can see we're able to set this to be based off of the labor cost, or we could also include it to um, be based off the sub cost category. So we're also able to add at the bottom here or create conditions that must be met or uh, in order for the calculation of this fee to take effect. Uh, so in this fee, uh, or in this case, we would only apply this to labor or sub cost uh, to cost items that have a CSI level of MISC or CSI level two of site prep. So as you can see here, now you can set this to any can apply. The same type of functionality has also been uh, added to how um, we distribute fees. So uh, now you can create distributed fees when any one or all of these are criteria are met. So if we look at this excess liability fee uh, that has been distributed, for, exa for example, maybe you pre-negotiate labor rates with your owner, but you still need to distribute your fee back into the estimate. Uh, you can choose to distribute to all cost, cost categories other than labor so that your labor price is unaffected. So just like the custom fee uh, that we just looked at, uh, we have enhancements to our fee distribution conditions here. You have the ability to only apply this distribution to cost items that meet any or all of these conditions. So here, this is distributed to the materials, equipment, sub, or other. And this would only be applied if the CSI level one is masonry or concrete. 
So as you can see, again, we have the any can apply. So speaking of distributed fees, uh, in previous versions of Estimator, distributed fees only showed up on reports and were not reflected on the estimate view when working with costs. With costs. So this caused uh, the estimators to not fully know what the estimate actually is uh, until a report was created. This kind of made it hard and tedious to understand where your costs are. Uh, so now we have added the ability to see the distributed cost directly on the estimate. Uh, we have a new column here called grand total cost. Uh, that, that, that shows you now the aggregate cost, including any fees. So the grand total cost shows you the distributed fee uh, included in that. Um, so for example, if we look at sla the slab on grade uh, cost item here, we can see that it has uh, the existing aggregate cost item and then the grand total cost also includes those distributed fees. So that, that covers some of the fees or some of the uh, new features that we have around fees. Um, we also recognize that getting reports out of the estimators can be challenging in the heat of the moment. So it's not uncommon to get uncommon to get uh, project specific or client specific needs at the 11th hour. And this means involving IT or someone outside of your department to make changes to your reports. Uh, we've enhanced the ability to use the estimate view itself for quickly creating reports. So you can uh, modify your, your estimate view to have the columns you want to display. And then uh, just as you would uh, previously from the report wizard, uh, you can easily create a new report from the estimate view. That will have the data you want to show. So. Um, we should have a, a report. As you can see, we have some uh, just a, a common report that's created here. It's got the same columns, it's the same formatting as uh, the way we've, we have it on our estimate view. At the bottom, you can also see that the, the fees are now displayed here. One thing I quickly uh, kind of glanced over and should have uh, shown you while I was going through the report wizard is you have the ability to, to save these reports as well now. So at the end of the report wizard, you have the ability to save reports for future use. By doing that, um, we recognize that every company has different branding needs and requirements. So now that you're able to save that, you can customize it using the uh, report designer that's built in to Estimator and customize a report uh, so that you can use that um, later on and customize it to reflect the uh, fonts or color schemas or apply any brandings and logos or images that you want on your report. So uh, earlier I created a, re a report that I've customized. So I'll go ahead and bring that up. And as you can see, it, it, it has um, the logo up in the right that I've added here. I've changed some of the fonts requirements here. I've added some colors to it um, and, and just customized that. Um, so that covers uh, the reporting changes that, that we've also, uh, or the features that we've added into 2019-20. Um, you know, I kind of went through that a little quickly. I, I don't know if we have any questions, but I'd kind of hand that back over to, to Melissa. Yeah, thank you so much, Victor. That was great. Uh, we do have a couple of questions here. And the first one is kind of around uh, reports. So the question is, can I run the same report against different estimates and can I give it to someone else to run? Could you touch on that? Sure, yeah, uh, you definitely can. Once you've actually created a custom report, uh, you would save that off in, into your, um, into a, a folder into, that, you have cut, um, that you have set up an estimator. You can share that report file and that's the same file that you would customize through the uh, report designer. So. Once you have that how you want it with the formatting and whatnot, you can share that to um, other users and they can run that report as long as it's in the correct folder location in the application. And, and expand on that a little bit. Um, it's not uncommon for um, our users and our clients to uh, 
kind of have a central location for all, all of their custom reports. And so if, if you're set up that way, you can also place the report in that central location and everybody will just automatically see it. Awesome. Um, then we've got one other question. Um, can reports now see both distributed and non-distributed costs? Correct. With the addition of the grand total cost column, uh, you were already previously able to see that on the reports, but now you have a, a separate column that, that, that displays that um, as well. Yeah, so you get that now both of both the reports from the estimate view here, since some of the reports reflect exactly what you see in the estimate view, but also with the standard custom reports that, uh, that clients create um, or that we work with clients to help with, create. Um, you also now have access to both uh, the total with the distributed as well as the total with the distributed. Fantastic. Well, I believe that's all the questions that we've got for today. So thank you again, Victor, for that demonstration. Uh, quick note to our attendees. Our next feature of the month webinar will be happening in January. Uh, date is to be determined, but it is going to be covering um, dashboards in Power BI. And for everyone that has attended and registered, we will be sending a recording of this webinar to you so that you can watch it again and share it with others at your leisure. Thank you again, everyone, for being here with us. Thank you, Victor and John, and we will see you guys next month. Thank you.